The Samsung Galaxy A54 5G after a month of usage and certainly a lot of talk about this device this week with the MKBHD video putting it at 78% of a flagship experience from the A54 5G. It's interesting, a very specific amount. You may agree or disagree with the individual percentages, but what we can't deny, at least I can't deny, and that's going to be some of the angle of this video is the value that the device does have and how much you can get from phones in this price range that do compete with flagship devices for an outsized amount less meaning you know it's not going to be eight hundred dollars difference between something like an a54 5g and the s23 ultra there is a difference obviously the s23 ultra is a better device but it's not going to be that outsized amount better i think that was his point and that's been my point here for a while now on this channel and this device has gotten a lot of hate a lot of hate and when i see the comments and the criticisms they're usually vague they're usually just like oh it stinks oh it's garbage it's trash and my first pushback is well have you used it it's like you feel so strongly about this device clearly that has to be some sort of personal experience you had to have used it you had to have hated it Tell me some of these specific things that you think are garbage or add up to this device being trash. And the answer, almost universally, is, oh, wait, well, no, I, didn't, I haven't used it. I've just seen other reviews on the device. I don't like this. Or I use the A53 5G, and I'm just basing my opinion on that. Granted there, the A53 5G was some hot garbage. But the A54 does not match it. It's not the same device. And I, I really have to discount a lot of other reviews that I've seen that take this device to task. There are a lot of reviewers out there. And listen, everybody's going to have their own opinion. Everybody's entitled to their own opinion. If you don't like it and you have valid reasons for not liking it, then that's fine. Don't like it. But at least give us those, those reasons. But the reasons better not be based in, well, they usually either get sent a lot of devices, high-end devices, or they're using a lot of high-end devices, and then they come down to something like this, and they recognize that there's a step down there, and then they criticize Samsung for it. That's not fair. That's not fair. And especially if you're being sent a lot of flagships for free to review, whatever the case may be, with a lot of these companies, then you kind of lose sight and focus on what value actually means. If you're just paying nothing for devices and they're showing up at your door like, well, why can't every device have this? Why can't every device uh, a feature flagship-like performance? Well, because there's a cost involved there. If you're still outlaying money, you understand that. There's a lot of value to be had here, especially when we're talking now, not five, $449. Now we're 400 bucks. I see it a lot of places, 399 Amazon link will be in the description, 375 which you start getting to that territory. This device gets a lot, lot better. And a lot of people, like I said, are basing their experience or avoiding this device, the A54, based on their experience with the A53. That's a mistake I would have made. I would have looked at my performance or my experience with the A53 and completely shunned this device. Samsung is greedy, but they're not stupid, okay? They, they're plenty of greedy, but they understand that that device had flaws and they worked to make them better with the A54. This processor, even though it's still an Exynos, is nothing like the Exynos that was in the A53. They increased that. They reworked the core. They put in a better, better performing processors and cores into the processor, and it has changed the way this device has functioned. You add that in with the refinements and the optimizations of One UI 5.1, and you get yourself a winner with the A54. A lot of people complaining about the biometrics. I don't understand that either. Everything seems to work fine. Fingerprint sensor, no issues whatsoever. Does it get warm? Yes. But not any warmer than every other device doing things that I normally would get a device warm. Intense gaming gets a little warm. Downloading a ton of updates, it gets a little warm. But I was just doing that on my S23 Ultra, and that got warm too. These devices just get warm when there's heavy usage on the modem, modem, there's heavy usage on the antenna, there's heavy usage on the processor. They're going to get warm. Is it warm enough where I'd say, oh boy, something's going wrong here? No, never. Never had that experience with the A54. Performance is going to be fine. Lots to like here for that money. It's enough. It's smooth enough to be able to run the 120 hertz display properly get you that smooth experience and not have you absolutely banging this device against the table like I was last year. The display is the display. 
Samsung quality flagship display. So when we talk, when MKBHD talked about those pillars and what you look at, for me, mine would be display, performance, build, some of those things in there. Camera comes a little bit further down the line, but let me tell you something else. This camera was a pleasant surprise. I was expecting that be like, the matchup to be like last year, where the Pixel 7a, when it comes out, is going to own camera and it's going to own performance, but the Samsung would fight back in terms of build quality, in terms of display, in terms of software. There are things, micro SD expandable storage, there are things that the A54 would fight back with, but it's not going to concede camera. I still believe that the Pixel camera is better and will be better, but this is no slouch. Really impressed by the performance in good light. Low light, it's going to suffer. There's problems, there's pixelation, and it gets soft in lower light. But in good light, it's perfectly fine, no issues. A lot of people were saying, oh, wait for the Pixel 7a. It's going to have other stuff. Yeah, but there's that rumored price increase. Okay, seven, uh, $799, $499 for the 7a. And you say, wow, it's 90 hertz display and it's wireless charge and those things are worth paying more for. Well, they're worth paying more to you. There has to be a line somewhere. There has to be a point where now it'll be a $100 gap. If the Pixel 7a starts at $499, and they're going to be a little bit more hesitant, you'd think, at the higher price rate, higher cost, to pull it back, and the first sale is going to be, what, $450 instead of $400, like last year with the 6a? So each, each increase or decrease in price is going to be more expensive than it was last year because of the higher starting price. So now that's a $125 difference between something like an A54 and the Pixel 7a. That's a big difference. That's a significant difference. That knocks a lot of people out of a market for a 7A that'll be looking at an A54 and find a lot of value here. So don't poo-poo it and say, oh, well, that's just a little bit more. It's $100 more, but it's worth it. Yeah, it's worth it to you. But there's a budget for people. There might have been a lot of people who were stretching the extra 50 bucks to get one of these devices. You know, if their budget was 400 they say, you know what, I'll spend an extra 50 bucks. They're not sp- stretching another 50 bucks. It's real money to people. You have to understand that and know that this device does a good job of striking value for what it offers for the people who understand what they want out of a phone. If display, micro SD, software, build quality are the most important things for you in a budget phone to fill up your bucket of what it takes for you to buy a device, this is good for the value. If it's camera, if it's raw performance, if it's going to be wireless charge, well, then the Pixel 7a is going to be something that you want to take a look at. Those are things that you have to consider. By the way, this case, Carl from uh, uh, Armadillo Tech sent this out to me. Really nice. I, I like this, this case born case. Good buttons, good build. I love the extra lip that it has on the display here, which is nice. It even has a spot for your lanyard strap, which I always love to see on cases. And I like a proper clear case that doesn't have some sort of plastic border or colored border here, so you don't get to enjoy it. Samsung has done a fantastic job with the styling on the A54 this year, especially if you get the lime or you get that beautiful violet color. So you want to see the band as well as the back all the way through. It just gives you the look of the device without being obstructive in any way. It's like 17 bucks. Link will be in the description. These are really nice. I like them to enjoy the design of my A54. But if you've been watching and you've seen a lot of nonsense on this phone, consider the source. Have they used the device? Look at the person's channel if you're taking buying advice. Do they do a lot of flagships? Is their home screen changed at all? You know, a lot of times you'll see you know, the, the default home screen. It looks like they've used it for maybe five minutes and they're complaining based off of what other people are complaining about. Does it look like they've used the device? Are they giving you real world experience with the device? I think if you sit down and you're honest with yourself and you understand what you're getting and you're coming from other budget devices or maybe older flagships, there are a lot of people that are saying, oh, I'm going to come from an S8 or an S9 or a Note 9. You're going to enjoy this. If you've been hanging in there with that performance on like an S7 or an S8 for the past few years, you're going to see a significant upgrade here with the A54 and you're going to enjoy it. And you're getting the software support that comes along with One UI 5.1 and the four years of major Android updates. Don't discount what this phone does. It is not last year's device. If you understand that, you're going to enjoy it. If you've made it this far, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Until next time, have that Steve Delicious day.